Hello, new my soccer universe. New glasses, everything fixed. Uh, see better again. Not that I was blind, but better. And yeah, we're in Barcelona, and let's get right to it. When Messi gets that stare, I think everyone knows there. What? What's up? And it happened today again. Sevilla against Barcelona was clearly the standout tie of today. Uh, looking over the results, this was really the one game that I wanted to watch. It was only the one game that, that I really saw. All the others, I, uh, I saw a few more here and there. I watched a few highlights. Um, but that was the one game that I saw completely. And what a game it was. Um, I knew that this is probably a good one. And after, you know... Champions League and the last few results for Barcelona also so and so and uh, we have two Clásicos this upcoming week so yeah uh, it was time to make a statement but gotta give it to Sevilla they actually were technically very well adjusted to Barcelona in the first half and right I actually didn't I watched the first 50 minutes because I saw the ski I uh, finished the ski jumping world championships uh, yeah, I like ski jumping, although this was the first competition I really watched today. Uh, so I, I, I started, and I think the first thing I saw is, I mean, typically Barcelona has possession, blah, 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 and Sevilla runs a counter-attack, the ball ends at Navas, and Navas slots it home. A uh, really nice counter-attack. And I thought already, I want to pull up the match details, I thought already, uh, yeah, this... Um, is exactly what the doctor ordered. Uh, and it might be a tough time for Barca. Well, it was not that tough because just a few minutes later, um, Barcelona, of course, wants to get the equalizer. They move forward, Rakitic puts a cross in, and Barcelona one times it into the net. Absolutely gorgeous goal that I remember. <laughs> I said to my wife, oh yeah, Messi is doing messy things again. But the game was not going really Barcelona's way. It was very even. Uh, Sevilla did the best to neutralize Barcelona. And, you know, Sevilla have been whipping boys at Barcelona's hands already twice. They beat the second string Barcelona um, in the Copa del Rey only for Barcelona to say, OK, let's take it serious. Let's uh, get them off. Also, remember, at the first game at the camp now, I think it was a 4-2 uh, when Messi broke his hand. So, you know, that was a little bit gotta make it up as well. Sevilla was well adjusted as I said and yeah Barcelona's defending was also kind of lax and that showed in the second goal for Sevilla through Mercado uh, where the ball was not cleared off the line and um, pull it back in Mercado is free in the box and can slot it home. Mercado reminds me of some guy that I know uh, here, a southern Italian, he, yeah, they have the pretty much the same jawline. Um, so yeah, Sarabia gets the assist, uh, Mercado slots it home, it's 2-1 for, uh, for Sevilla at halftime, and you didn't really know where is this now going, is this, uh, will Sevilla hold on? I think that was the mistake that they made, uh, because in the second half it was all Barcelona. Sevilla tried to uh, hold back, they didn't launch the dangerous count counter attacks that they had had, had the first half. First half, Sevilla was threatening at almost any uh, moment. Uh, second half, I didn't see that. I only saw Barcelona was slowly chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And it was Messi, uh, who again, after assist by uh, Dembele, a move uh, Rakitic, Dembele, uh, after the goal, I think Sevilla gave the ball away way too easy. I think goalkeeper kicked it out uh, and then Rakitic um, gets the ball, puts it to Dembele. Dembele and, you know, uh, Barcelona is moving forward. The Sevilla players were in the forward movement, trying to uh, catch up. And in that moment, they completely forget about Messi. Messi gets the ball uh, at the edge of the box and I saw him touch it. And I said to myself, that's going to be a goal. There was an inevitability about it. Absolutely crazy. And you could see it uh, right at halftime and so on. When Messi came on, he had this dead stare. And when Messi gets the stare, he wants to take over the game. 
and at that moment he clearly had I mean two goals already and there was an absolute inevitability there was a, another chance by Messi a little bit later uh, which he didn't make for once and then um, a deflected shot into the uh, bo <laughs> into, in, into the box lands at Messi's feet who is in front of the goalkeeper and just chips it elegantly over him the way the ball came to Messi was maybe a little bit lucky. The way it was converted, absolute world class. Three goals by Messi. He turned the game around. And only at that point, Sevilla came back a little bit. But uh, not much happening. Uh, in, the, in the end, Messi improvised the assist for the fourth goal to Suarez, who finally gets on the scoring sheet again. Um, that's the only thing that worries me about Barcelona. Well, there are two things that worry me about, about, about Barcelona. A little bit uh, defense. Uh, the I can't say three things, and but you know the, the last two are kind of, kind, of, kind, of, kind, of, kind of together. That the attacking line is not if there's Messi not contributing, they are not doing well. Uh, especially Coutinho and now Dembele who's get back from injury, but Coutinho for me is an also ran. And then Suarez has not been scoring. I mean, Suarez picked up the slack uh, earlier this season when Messi was out now. Uh, yeah, he's back on the scoring sheet, so we have to see where, where this is going. I found it interesting that they played today. Uh, at one point, you know, I started with Coutinho, Messi and Suarez. But at one point, um, Vidal was taken off at halftime and then Bele came on so they played with the four uh, big attackers which technically looked a little bit weird I keep saying it for me Coutinho as great as a player he was at the World Cup for Brazil and maybe even at the end of the season for Barcelona um, at the moment he is an afterthought and that is worrisome maybe he just needs the minutes to get going and maybe they give him that to actually start feeling again uh, I am belonging to the squad similar to what happened with Bakayoko at Milan who looked horrible at the beginning of, of the season but uh, somewhere in December when Milan really had had, had, had a rough patch suddenly Bakayoko was actually a focal point and now he looks all good so that was a standout tie, and uh, while we're at La Liga, let's look at the other one. Getafe mean, uh, beats um, Rayo 2-1. Rayo is having a really rough patch now. Alaves, Celta de Vigo, and Znil Nil, and Athletic Bilbao gets another win at A-bar, um, which gives the table. We have no Barcelona at the moment, 10 points ahead, but Atletico and Real are still playing tomorrow. Um, Rayo doesn't look good i mean they are now in 19th spot with um game uh game more than via real who is just ahead of them also with 23 points and celta to, uh also with 25 is uh, 25 games and 25 points uh is in 17th spot so that looks uh not too good uh bilbao though i think they look safe fish i mean they're now in ninth spot Yes, they have one more game than Valencia and Betis, but um, it doesn't seem like there's too much uh, danger for them to be relegated as it was early, early in the season. Uh, I was also some Serie A action. I wish I would have seen some highlights of uh, Torino beating Atalanta 2-0. That, to me, is a big result because uh, that means that Atalanta is really falling off. Uh, Iso in the 49th and Falk in the 46th making the two goals. So, yeah. Uh, that loss against Milan hurt Atalanta big time, the second loss in a row. And Atalanta looked like a team that actually could uh, really threaten for fourth spot, but not at the moment. And I saw quite some of the Frosinone Roma game, which, uh, you know, I'm a Roma fan. I want if second Milan, then Roma. And I don't like it at, at the moment. I'm looking at every opponent of Milan that I want them to not win. But then if, if I think about it, I really want Milan and Roma to get a, get third and fourth spot for the Champions League. That would be my ideal outcome. So I need them both to win in that sense. And started out badly. Frosinone took an early lead uh, through Ciano. Nzonzi plays a ball uh, in, 
that no one picks up, Giano uh, makes a shot onto the near corner that Olsen saves, but the ball goes always hand high into the net and he cannot get it out anymore. Uh, but then within the, within two minutes, uh, around the 30th minute, Roma get, got something going. I saw basically the first 35 minutes of that game uh, really well. And uh, Jeko equalizes, just takes over. The ball is mine puts it in the, into the net via the post. And then Pellegrini, uh, I think it was an attack over Sharavi, and Pellegrini just slides it in a minute later, and Roma has turned the match. Seemingly then took the gas of the, you know, took the foot off the pedal a little bit, tried to just get this home with as little um, effort as possible, and they paid for it, because Pinamonte, after Gianno assists, a really nice attack. I mean, Gianno got the ball, played it to Piemonte, uh, no, the other way around. Piemonte uh, gets the ball. I think a three Roma defense plays it uh, to uh, Ciano, and Ciano right back, and a nice move, two two. And everyone looks at Frosinone uh, gets the point, and uh, I gotta give it to Frosinone. They are uh, for a relegation threat side. They're very positive side. I mean, they are going forward, really trying to attack. Uh, but yeah, they had to pay. Uh, five minutes stoppage time, and just when you thought that yeah, this will be really tough for Di Francesco, De Rossi plays a wonderful ball over the defense, lobbed it over the defense to um, El Sharavi, who puts it, uh, crosses in, and Jacob with the chest slots it home for his second goal and steals the game for Roma. As I said, uh, over, I think I'm happy with the Roma win. Um, I feel bad for Frosinone, and yeah, Roma is one point behind Milan, so that makes me a little bit uneasy. But as I said, I want both Roma and Milan to move on. I am key. Oh, I'm really all Fiorentina tomorrow. I mean, I like Fiorentina anyway, but you know, if they beat Inter tomorrow, that would be great. Uh, but so yeah, Frosinone. I do feel bad because I think they would have deserved a draw uh, with the effort they put in, but um, wasn't meant to be. Um, Serie A at the bottom looks at least in interesting. I think Kievo is done, but uh, Frosinone is, yeah, ah, Empoli is also 21. Bologna, it, uh, if Bologna gets a win tomorrow, they are also level with Empoli. Frosinone 16, it's, it's a long way to go. Other results. Um, quickly, France, I saw Halas Paris Saint Germain, Nîmes, uh, and Mbappé had, had two goals ruled out one for offside, one for a handball. And, you know, Mbappé, everyone says he's such a nice, level headed guy, but he, there is a little devil in him, I gotta say. Um, PSG, of course, without Cavani and Di Maria, they were sitting, and it wasn't Kunku who made the breakthrough in the 40th minute. Nîmes also. Uh, promotes a little bit like Fro Frozen only, but more successful because uh, they are kind of mid table sitting, uh, trying to play with PSG. But of course, this is bound to uh, fail. And in the end, Mbappe makes two more goals, uh, one of which you could really see. I mean, he has such superior speed. Um, what can what what can do? He is a force of nature. Overall, I like the guy, but I've seen already a few times that he's not this clean player that many make him out to be. I think some, sometimes I would like that he is um, a little bit more aware. When he made the uh, handball to score, I mean, a classical Thierry Henry moment almost, uh, somewhere, I would have loved for him to go to the ref and say, no, no, this is no goal. I would have loved to see that. Uh, then I think he's uh, superior, morally superior to uh, most other players. That would have been a remarkable, but you know. I somehow understand it, and I'm not knock knock Mbappé. I, I think he's a force of nature, and he's a very likable guy overall. Amiens beats Nice 1-0. Guingamp gets a win against Angers, but you know, and if I look, look at the league table, uh, nothing... Amiens moves ahead of Monaco, but Monaco is playing tomorrow, and Guingamp is still in last place, and it doesn't help much, but you know, it more hurts the other teams. Um, 
we have to see how it pans out. Saint Etienne again won yesterday. This was a big win for them. And that leads us now to the other two, uh, England and France, uh, England and Germany. Quickly, England. I think the big result is Burnley against Tottenham. Uh, Kane coming back. Um, Tottenham, as usual, a little bit uh, well, well in the game, um, but sloppy. Absolutely sloppy, and Burnley takes the lead after a corner kick that should not have been through Wood. A few minutes later, Kane, after throwing, has a head start and puts it back. So he, after I think he missed seven games or something like that, makes the 1 1. But at that moment, then suddenly Burnley is starting to overpower Tottenham and they get the winner through Ashley Barnes after Goodmanson actually wanted to take a shot on goal. Uh, which didn't go, but Barnes just slots it in and makes it 2-1 Burnley. So uh, Tottenham definitely losing now uh, touch with the top two teams. Um, of course, we have uh, Liverpool playing at United tomorrow. Um, but still, uh, Spurs, if United, let's say United win, they still have their six points off the pace of uh, Spurs. So... Um, I would say Spurs looks like a decent third place team. Bournemouth Wolves 1 1, and Newcastle wins against Huddersfield. Uh, Leicester, I saw that, that, that one, where Crystal Pal against Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace had a um, halftime lead, so Bajuai, the guy who hit the post and then uh, had at the World Cup. Evans equalized, but the right off, uh, right, a few minutes later, uh, Zaha makes it 2 1. At that point, I kind of. Uh, <laughs> Clicked out and uh, Milojevic gets a penalty goal and Saha makes a, a fourth one for Crystal Palace, which is actually a pretty big win for them, I would say. Um, if I look at it, yeah, Crystal Palace, Leicester, they're almost 11 points, Leicester still ahead of them. Uh, let's see, Newcastle moves ahead with that win, 28 points, it might... It may work out that they are not being relegated, but <coughs> let's see where this is going. And finally, Germany, there was a full round, and Germany is a little bit like England. Bayern gets slightly lucky win. I mean, uh, Hertha had a big chance before Bayern scored, and if you don't make chances against Bayern, you're going to lose. That's exactly what happened. Bayern gets the win. Uh, Javi Martinez scoring the winner. And now they're level on points with Dortmund, but Dortmund still has a superior goal differential. That's the one difference with uh, England. But, you know, Bayern level with Dortmund. Dortmund still a game to play against Leverkusen, though. It's also not, not easy, similarly with Liverpool against United. <sighs> you just kind of feel the nerves a little bit. Uh, Gladbach had two huge chances to take an early lead against Wolfsburg. Current Gladbach coach is, of course, a former Dortmund uh, Wolfsburg coach. And Wolfsburg continues their great form away from home and puts three against Gladbach. Gladbach having two home losses in a row, definitely losing touch uh, with the top teams. Freiburg gets a huge win against Augsburg. We're already 3-0 up at halftime, first time in almost 10 years that that happened for them. Augsburg pulls one back, but then uh, two more for Freiburg, 5-1. Mainz against Schalke, 3-0. Schalke just almost beat Manchester City and then they completely fall apart against uh, Mainz. I just don't get it. And Düsseldorf gets a win against Nürnberg, which just makes Nürnberg's uh, task even harder. So let's look at the table in Germany as well. As I said, level on points, Dortmund and Bayern. Dortmund still ahead and hopefully they get the win against Leverkusen tomorrow. Leverkusen must, have, must be devastated after uh, what happened to them in the Europa League. Uh, what else do we have tomorrow? Hannover, Frankfurt and Leipzig against Hoffenheim is the late game. So yeah, on Monday actually. So um, at the moment Wolfsburg moves in fifth spot uh, ahead of Leverkusen and ahead of Frankfurt. Uh, Frankfurt will not be able to overtake Wolfsburg, so that was bad news for them. I actually really like how Frankfurt is playing overall, but I have a little bit a uh, hard time scoring wins. Uh, Werder, third point against Stuttgart, is actually moving ahead of Hertha. Mainz is moving up. Schalke 
still looking safe-ish. But they are in 14th spot. Freiburg looks definitely safe. They are 27. Schalke now 23 points out of 23 games. It's a horrible uh, move. But, you know, Augsburg is in bad shape and they have 18 points. Um, Stuttgart maybe gets something going. Has 16 is on the relegation spot. So, you know, this is where it's going. Hanover and Nuremberg. With a huge effort, they might, may, might make something. But I'm really wondering about Schalke this season. Well, let's see. Tomorrow we have, the, uh, when you watch it, it's, it's already today. Uh, we have, of course, the big uh, game in uh, England between uh, Manchester United and Liverpool. League Cup final, not sure if I'm going to watch it. I actually think there are more interesting games in uh, Italy and uh, Spain. I'm actually looking, I mean, uh, at 3 o'clock spot I will watch the United game, but Parma Napoli looks good. Uh, Fiorentina Inter is probably the evening game that I want to watch. Um, and let's see quickly Spain, uh, Valencia, Leganes early, yeah. 4 o'clock Atletico Villarreal uh, might be interesting what Atletico is doing. Yeah. Let's see, maybe there's a League Cup final in there, but I think I will put. I already, oh, I already told you. I think I'm more into watching a little bit more Serie A and maybe I'll, I'll watch the Atletico Villarreal as well. Let me know what what, what you think. Messi again showed us what Messi can do. Uh, and I'm looking forward. The next two weeks for Barcelona will be really interesting because, I mean, you have two Clásicos and especially the one, the one on Wednesday, I think it's the bigger one, because uh, it will go for the Copa del Rey final. Um, the one on uh, next Saturday, there's not too much riding on it any, anymore. I don't think Real Madrid will go back. I mean, they would need that win to get back into in, in, the game, but I don't, I don't think Barcelona is going to do that. Let me know what you watched uh, today, whether what I'm saying you agree with my assessments. I really... I really think it was a great game between Sevilla and Barcelona. Absolutely enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.